So from the 1998 paper one, question one, find a line in a triangle, a nice standard question, a diagram's drawn to help you. But quite good practice, I'll just do it here, for when there isn't a diagram, to help you visualise it, you should always make a sketch with these lines, unless there's one drawn, or with the circles, unless there's one drawn. And if it is drawn, of course, it's your paper, you can draw on that paper in the exam because you'll be taken away with you. But if there isn't a diagram, you should draw one yourself. So what I'll do here is I'll pretend it's not drawn. So what I would do then would just make a quick sketch of it. Put it on the axis and then as accurately as you can, 4, 3, 4, 3, put in the point A. B, 6, that's about double the distance of that A1, so I'll put in B there. C, negative 2, negative 3. So I've got this diagram. Might not be very big. But it's enough to check things like where it might cut an axis, or if you've got a gradient going the right way. And it says AM is the median from A. And there's another thing with that point M. If that was a fairly decent diagram, then M would be below the x-axis. I'll just compare that with the actual one. And it is. Right, so M would be the first thing. I want the equation of the AM, so I need to get the point M. Well, M is just going to be the midpoint of BC, and it's handy having them written there, so you can just pair them off. So it's the average, so I'll be adding the x-coordinates, I'll set it out, and I'll be adding the y-coordinates. And then I can write down the answer. 6, take away 2 is 4, divide by 2 is 2, 1 and negative 3 is negative 2, divide by 2, negative 1. So that's the first part. M is the point 2, 1. Next thing would be, I'll need the gradient of the line AM. Well, I know two points on it, so I'll do that for the gradient of AM. Especially if there's lots of gradients to be worked out, you should always put down a little note of which line segment it is that you're doing at this particular time. So it'll be the difference in the y-coordinates over the difference in the x-coordinates. Now, if I didn't copy any of this down, if I was using the figures from the paper, it's probably safer to write down the two coordinates here so you don't get them mixed up. Having them at the top makes it quite easy. So I've got A to M, these two points here. So I've got, if we make it that order, A to M like vectors, the second take away the first, just to keep it consistent. Negative one take away three, over two take away four. That gives me negative four over negative two. So that gives me a gradient of two. Not so good this line, you can see that it's steep, it's positive and it's steep, it looks more like a 4 or something, but it was just a sketch, at least it's not got a negative value, so that's confirming that part of it. And lastly the equation, y minus b equals mx minus a, putting in either point, we'll use that point a, y minus the y coordinate is the gradient times x minus the x coordinate. There'll be no fractions in this. And the x will be positive, so I'm going to put it in the form of y equals 2x. Now that would be, I'll write it out, minus 8 plus 3, so y equals 2x minus 5 for the final answer. There, that was the first one done. So for question 2, is a polynomial, degree 3, highest power is 3, factorise it. Well, first thing, check, are there any common factors? Have the coefficients? No. What about the letter X appearing on them all? No, that means I can just go straight down to the synthetic division then. There are four terms, there's no missing terms. Power 3, power 2, power 1, power 0, so you just put in the coefficients. 1, negative 4, negative 7 and 10. Now, that should factorise to three brackets, three linear brackets, X plus something or X minus something. Unless, of course, it factorises to a linear one, which it must do, Every power 3 one will have one linear bracket. We may not be an integer though. The remaining quadratic, the bit that comes from here, might not factorise. That's not to say it wouldn't have solutions if it was an equation equal to zero. But you can check if a quadratic will factorise by getting its discriminant. If its discriminant's a perfect square, then you'll have rational answers. And rational answers means it would have factorised. Anyway. These three brackets, the first times the first times the first would give x cubed, the last times the last times the last would give 10. So numbers that can give 10, 1, 2, 5 and 10. This has got negatives in it, so chances are I'll find a positive number that can rattle through this, picking up the negatives and knock out the 10. So start with the simplest one, 1. 1 goes up to 1, adds to negative 3, 
times 1 stays negative 3, adds to negative 10, and go goes up to negative 10, and there it is. The value of the function at 1 was 0, or dividing this by x minus 1 gives a remainder of 0, so x minus 1 is a factor. And this part gives the remaining factor, x squared minus 3x minus 10. And then just factorise it. Quick check, you don't need to do this because you can see the numbers quite easily here. What's this discriminant? Negative 3 squared, 9. Minus 40, but in a negative there, so plus 40, 49. 49 is a perfect square, this will factorise. But you knew it anyway, because it was so easy. Must be 2 and 5. Multiply to give 10 with a difference of 3. 2 and 5. The negative goes to the larger one, opposite sides. So there's the factorisation. Question 2. So question 3. Vectors. But vectors given as multiples of the unit vectors. The unit vectors that form the basis of the coordinate system. Oh, what have we got for that then? Just a quick reminder. If we take x that way, y that way, lying on the floor, the flat plane, and z going vertically upwards, i means you take one step in the x direction. j is one step in the y direction. And k is one step up vertically. So when it says, what's the next part? Express this, right, a. You want p minus q plus 2r in component form. So I'll just put it into the component form. One step along, one step back, one step down. One, one, negative one. Take away q. Now there's a missing one in q, it's the j. So it's one step along, none back, and then four up. Two times r. Ooh. Sorry, two. R goes, there's another missing one, it's K. This just lies on the floor, lies on the flat plane. So I've got four, negative three, but zero for up. And then that's just a little bit of arithmetic. You just do the three separate lines of it. One take away one is zero, plus eight is eight. One take away zero is still one, minus six is minus five. Negative one take away four is negative five, plus nothing is still negative five. So that was the first one. B. B says, calculate P dot R. P dot R. Oh, I'll write them down again. P was 1, 1, negative 1. R was 4, negative 3, 0. And the scalar product means multiplying the corresponding components together and adding them up. I'll spell it out. 1 times 4 plus middle line. 1 times negative 3 plus bottom line, negative 1 times 0, well times 0 won't give me any answers, so that gives me 4 minus 3, I'll write it in anyway, plus 0, which gives me 1. So the scalar product is 1. And then the last part is, what's the length of R? Well, you can see that straight away, 3, 4, 5, so I'll set it out. So for part C, find the length of R. I'll set it out this way, so it's just Pythagoras. The length of R will be the three components added up. So it'll be 4 squared and negative 3 squared plus the 0 squared if you like. You know the answer, you know what's coming up. 16 plus 9 is 25. So the length of r is going to be root 25, which was 5. Yes, I know you knew it all along, but that's it set out formally if the numbers weren't so convenient. That's 3. So question 4. There's a circle with this equation that says find the equation of the tangent at this point in the circle, at the point 6, 2. Well, it's a line. The tangent's a line, so it's going to be y minus b equals mx minus a. I need a point on it. I've got it. I need its gradient. <coughs> well, I can get that from the circle, because if it's a tangent, it must be at right angles to the radius. Now, where is the centre, though? It comes from this equation. x minus the x-coordinate, y minus the y-coordinate. x minus 3, so it's 3 along. y minus, that would be a negative 2. It's the opposite of that. Negative 2, so it's down here. So I've got the centre, 3, negative 2. There's the radius. Get the gradient of the radius. The difference in the y-coordinates over the difference in the x-coordinates between these two points. So 2 take away negative 2 for the y's. 6 take away 3 for the x's. 2 take away negative 2, that's 4 upon 3. Which means that the gradient of the tangent will be the negative of the reciprocal, since they must multiply to give negative 1. So the negative of the reciprocal. 
So the gradient of the tangent is negative 3 quarters. Then you can straight and get the equation of the tangent. y minus b is mx minus a. There's only 1.62, how to use that. y minus 2 is negative 3 quarters times x minus 6. So multiply everything by 4 will be 4y minus 8. And then that'll leave a 3. Might as well do that at the same time. The negative 3 is still to multiply this side. Negative 3x plus 18. Now, to avoid negatives, I think I'll take that over to join it. So I've got the 3x plus 4y equals, I think I'll bring this over to that side, just so I've got a few negatives as possible, equals 18 and 8, 26. Or you could rearrange that into your own favourite form of the equation of the line. They're all perfectly valid. Question 4 done. Question 5. A line with points dividing it looks like the section formula. You could use the section formula if it just said something like find C. Then you'd probably do it in one go. It says that these line segments are all the same. So C divides it in the ratio of 1 bit to 2 bits. D divides it in the ratio of 2 to 1. But there's only two marks though. That's only just one for each. And it does say, first of all, <coughs> find AB. And then AC. The thing is, once you know that move, the move that takes you from A to C will also take you from C to D and D to B. Once you know the move that takes you from A to C, you could just add that move onto those coordinates and you'd be there straight away. So we'll be using the section formula here. Anyway, how do you get from A to B? Well, B minus A. So that'll be 9, 2, negative 4. Take away 3, negative 1, 2. I'll put my brackets in now. Because you'll probably notice when you put your brackets in advance, they never match, even though that looks terrible at the bottom of that one. And then that will give me a wee smiley face. That will give me 9 take away 3 is 6. 2 plus the 1 is 3, negative 4, negative 6. So going from A to B is this. Which means that going from A to C, well I'll put it, it's not as neat as you'd be able to do it having more room. AC is only one third of AB. So it's just one third of six, three, negative six, which means that's two, one, negative two. So that's the first bit. And then part B, find the coordinates of C and D. Depends on much work you need to do. Because all you need to do to find C is to say, well, I'm going to put two on the X, one on the Y, and take two off the Z, and you'd be there. And once you knew C, you could just do the same again. Put two onto the X, one onto the Y, and take two off the Z. Or you could set it out formally. I'm not sure exactly which way I want to put it down just now. So if you set it out formally, it'd be something like this. I need more room though. You'd have to say, well, to get to the point C, I would start at the point A, and then make the move that goes from A to C. I would start at three, negative one, two, and add on 2, 1, negative 2, which is of course exactly the same thing, 2 onto the x, 1 onto the y, and the 2 off of the z, which gives me um, 5, that's a wee mess there, isn't it? 5, 0, 0, which means c is the point, 5, 0, 0. But you could probably just have stated that in a way. Once you've got those moves, just put it down, because it was only one mark each, and you only get whole marks. And then for d, I'll need to clear it. Now for D, once I've got C, again I could just have done this. I know the move that took me, i will better write that down again, well, there it's there. 2 onto the Y, the X, so that's 7. 1 onto that, that's 1. 2 off of that, negative 2, and that's your answer. And that probably would have done the question. But I'll set it out formally just for the practice. How would you get to the point D? You would start at a known point and then make the move. But the move to D is going to be two lots of that, so it'll be two lots of, I could have gone for C, but that was a derived point, two lots of AC. So we'd start at three, negative one, two, and add on two lots of two, one, negative two. So that's going to give me altogether three plus four is seven, negative one plus two is one, two minus four is negative two, making D the point seven, one, negative two, which you knew anyway. And you probably could just have done it just from those coordinates, just by adding two onto the x, taking, sorry, one onto the y and taking two off the z. Right, question five. Question six. Functions are functions. Nice ones. None of these fractions yet. Find an expression for f of g of x. 
Well, f of g of x means f is going to act on whatever g produces. g produces this. And then f acts on whatever gets hold of by squaring the thing it gets hold of and then taking off 1. Well, I got hold of that. I got hold of x squared plus 2. So I need to square that and then take away 1. So, squaring a bracket, square the first. So squaring the first is going to be x squared times x squared is x to the 4. Twice the product, that'll be 4x squared. Square the last, that'll be plus 4 minus 1, which gives me f of g of x equals x to the 4 plus 4x four squared. Those are written 3, plus 3. Right, that was the first bit. Part B. Part B said, now factorise it. Well, oops, x to the 4 plus 4x squared plus 3 is in the form of a quadratic because it's in the form of something, that's that x squared, and then that thing squared and then a number at the end. Just like you get with the cosses and cos squares. It's something, something squared and then just a constant. So it must factorise if it does. Check the discriminant. 4 squared is 16. Take away 4 times, take away 12 is uh, 4. Perfect square, it'll factorise. But it'll factorise into this. It must be x squared times x squared to give x to the 4. 1 times 3 to give 3, and then they're all positives. And you just quickly check that works. x squared times x squared x to the 4. 1, 3 is a 3. 1 for the inner product, 3 for the outer, and there you are. Question 6, done.